Okay, people. This is uh, May 22nd, 2017. I'm using the old X camera here, so it's got the floppy screen because it's broken. So anyway, I said I was going to do this because I'm clearing out my sewing room, people. I'm taking back my sewing room. This is like a weed. What happened to Uncle John is like a weed. So I got to get the weed out of my sewing room, just like the weed in my yard, right over there from those Chinese people across the fence with their weeds right or root systems that they don't know how to control anyway um this is the letter the one and only letter that John's adopted daughter wrote Joan her adopted mother in all the time hold on a minute in all the time Joan lived on the mainland, which was five years. Happy birthday. Happy 69th birthday. So Joan was 69 years old when she died. Because she died December 14, 2013. And if you look at the, this here, this is April 27, 2013. Dear Mom, well, you finally got your birthday card from me. I hope your birthday was a good day for you and you enjoyed your birthday. Well, it's Saturday, so tonight is gaming night. So I get hours of playing pretend. I play a spoiled brat wizard with a 12-year-old indentured servant because I can't have a slave. <laughs> I call him Backpack. His real name is Richard. He wears custom-made something, leather shorts and suspenders, traditionally worn by the people of Germany, with metal rings on the legs and body of the something in case he needs to be disciplined. And the metal rings can be chained together so he can be hobbled. I know. I have too much time on my hands. Anyway, I love you lots. And Jeanette says happy birthday too. Love, Deb. This girl never once came over to see John. Or John. Dear Mom, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm terrible with mailing things. I still have the card. So here's a quick hello and love you. Happy Mother's Day. Glad that you are generally glad that you generally enjoy your days in Surrey now more than you did before. It seems like a decent place. Now that I'm done piddling and chattering on I now only have to mail the card and things. I'm sorry it's nothing fancy or even doesn't, but it's the thought that counts. Even if you did get it a week, even if you did get it weeks later. But again, happy birthday, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Love always, Debbie. And then I have Debbie's, uh, when she was in grade one. This is what the Duncan clan told John to throw out when uh, Joan died. And of course, I have a hard time doing these things, people. This is when Debbie was in grade one. Okay. And then we got a whole bunch of pictures that are originals that Uncle John was told to throw out after they took Joan's body. Because that's all they wanted was her body and her money. 
just like with Uncle John. They left everything behind, including his family, because all they wanted, once they got a hold of him, was his body and his money. That's when they adopted Debbie. She was three months old. That's Joan. Debbie seeing Santa Claus. Debbie seeing Santa Claus. And there's Uncle John when he was young. He was extremely young. I met Uncle John when he was 54. Two? Something like that. 52, 53, 51. And there's Joan. This was, I don't know, 1966. Hold on a minute, people. Okay, so I'm going to keep this video short. I'm looking at this mess, people. Obviously trying not to get mad, right? Seeing it for what it is, it's like a weed infestation. It needs to be rooted out. So I'm, I'm rooting out all this stuff regarding Uncle John out of this sewing room, right? And uh, I'm not going to stop working on this stuff. I'm just taking it out of here, all right? This stuff is going to follow these people for a long time. It's not going to follow me, people. It's going to follow them. Like, who in their right mind just takes a body and the money and leaves everything else behind? That's not my legacy, people. Okay? That's the Duncan clans. So anyway, it's about noon now. Maybe a little after. Around 3 o'clock, I'm going to bag up those roots from that marrow plant that's spreading out like a weed into plastic bags and I'm gonna write a little note in English I don't speak Chinese so they can have somebody interpret it and I'm gonna tell them that I'm not well and that I'm tired of having to dig up that plant just to control it on my side and that they need to do something about it right in terms of along the fence so it doesn't continue to spread on my side and I'm going to ask them to remove their raspberry bush, right? Because if they don't, people, I'm going to come in with my clippers and I'm, well, no, it has to come up by the root. It has to come up by the root. If I put a board down deep, it, what happens is that when the water runs, it's going to pool. It's just going to turn it into a mud bath. There won't be enough drainage, right? And I shouldn't have to do that because there's no reason for these people to be selfish like this with their growing of plants that they don't want to necessarily look after properly. All right. So anyway, back to this stuff. I'm going to pick away at it, right? It's going to take me a while to clear out this sewing room because I really don't have a place for five bins of paperwork. And I'm not talking small bins. I'm talking big ones. All right. And you've seen that letter that was written in 2013 by the adopted daughter who benefited from doing nothing. Doing absolutely nothing, people. Simply because she could toss it around I'm the adopted daughter. Well, after going through this experience, my advice would be people need to be very careful when they think about adopting children because if this is the way the children grow up and behave, right? Because we're not just dealing with Uncle John went back to Victoria. We're dealing with Uncle John was medically kidnapped, so he was forced to go back to Victoria, be isolated, right? Be told that his memories were insignificant because the new memories that were being built 
based on what his adopted daughter wanted and his sisters wanted is what was important. Well, his immediate family, who is me and the children, and Andre, we are still in limbo. Right? So when they watch my videos and they see my sewing table bonked up with their weed, just like with those Chinese people next door, you know, it, it wasn't enough that they've got the roots growing from that plant coming in. They got the grapevine going over my fence and smothering out all the sunlight, right? Half the fence is gone because it grows on my side and the grapes produce on my side, right? But it smothers out underneath and I can't grow anything along as that other plant is spreading out, right? That's pretty selfish, don't you think, on their part? Because they're, they know it. Just because they don't necessarily speak English very well doesn't mean that they don't understand what they're doing. Just like they understood when they put that raspberry plant along the fence there because they know that I, will, I won't have a choice but to dig out those roots when they start spreading. In two years from now, it'd take two years, I know, because I've been growing raspberries since 2011 so I know I know their cycles it won't first year won't be so bad but by the second year they're gonna start popping up on the grass and then I have to dig as I'm digging as they're hitting golf balls now at me and the kids because they can't get it through their head that it's not all about them well this is the same kind of shit this, this stealing of Uncle John's assets and locking them away like a dirty secret is all about them. And you can see what they think about them. I showed it to you today. Now I'm getting it out of my sewing room. And it's evidence, people. It's evidence when this shit goes to court. That's, that's, that's all I can say for Uncle John's destiny. Because sooner or later, it will be in court, one way or another. It's not going away. I'm so tired from yard work. I have to go outside and plant at 3 o'clock or so. The beets with Andre the carrots with Andre, the peas have already sprouted and got roots because remember my seeds got wet, the peas never got into the ground and for the last four days they've been growing roots so their roots are about almost an inch long so I got a little thing of peas that have to go into the ground so we're doing peas, beets, carrots today, a few sunflower seeds, right, and once I'm out there I'm going to start digging up on that side the dirt throw in a few potatoes that are needed to be in the ground a month ago right and get it ready for what's going and growing now sprouting in the in the um, X Club and in the greenhouse right because I'm gonna have this humongous cucumber patch my landlady is gonna come by she always come and looking when the things are growing and she gets so excited right? <laughs> like I said <coughs> she kind of reminds me of my grandmother Cause she's tiny right she's a little woman and she's she's cute right so I want to surprise her with a big cucumber patch this year so I'm gonna work on that but I'm also bagging up these freaking roots man that I pulled out I'll show you I'll show you I'm gonna upload this though but you'll see it in the next video right there's two bags of Two grocery bags full of this marrow roots that come from next door with a note telling them to remove their raspberry bush. So anyway, I'm going to clear off this table. I'll figure it out. Going to log this stuff down still. Right, going with the flow. I'm taking back my sewing room. <laughs>